And now on the line from Berlin is Nikki Maximovich, the UK country manager from Ecosia. Nikki, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, uh, Nikki, Ecosia is a great organisation, but a, but a lot of our listeners today from Ireland will probably not know the work that you do. Can you tell us who are Ecosia? Ecosia, and a bit about the evolution of the organisation over the last few years. Yep, absolutely. So Ecosia is, um, uh, we're based in Berlin, and we have a search engine that works just like Google, uh, ecosia.org. Uh, you can head there and have a look for yourself. Um, you can use it to exactly the way you use Google, or you can use Bing or any other search engine to look up what you need um, to find out on the internet. Um, the only difference is that what we do is we use all our profits that we make from search ads uh, to finance reforestation projects. Um, so that means that we basically plant millions of trees all around the world. Um, and to date, we've actually planted over 35 million trees already. Um, and that's sort of over the course of the last three, four years. Mm. Um, so basically, what we have is a search engine that allows you to uh, help with reforestation, um, with community efforts, um, empowering sort of local rural communities in the developing world um, to make a living in a way that's sustainable both for them and for the environment. Um, but basically, by just by doing what you'd be doing anyway, which is searching online, browsing the internet. Mm, it's amazing that you've planted over 30 million trees. You know, I think it's fantastic. Uh, do all your profits go to uh, planting trees or... And most of them are about the story. Yeah, it's basically it's all our profits. So basically, how it works is we make um, we make, make all that revenue from search ads, which means that um, when a user clicks on um, one of the search ads, then we make revenue from that, mm -hmm. and then the profits from that, all of them will go towards our tree planting fund, um, and then from that we will pay our various partners. Um, for the work that they do and we fund the entire project um, that we have all over the world. So yeah, usually it's about between 40 to 50 percent of our total revenue is how much we um, give away each month. And do you ever get any funding from governments or other organizations around the world? No, so we're totally um, self-funding. We don't expect we don't accept any donations. Uh, we have no funding um, from um, state organizations or from individuals. So every, um, all the money that we generate is generated through the search ads. And how much does it cost to buy a tree, do you know? So it will completely depend on the location that we're planting in. Um, and it will also depend on the kind of project that we're doing. So on average, between our projects, it's about um, 20 to 30 cents mm. euro um, to plant a tree. And that will basically also include the cost of, uh, if you imagine that you can set, plant several trees um, sort of across the space of an hour, and it, those kind of total costs will also include things like transport if it's needed, um, seeds, uh, wages, of course. We make sure to always pay fair, fair wages um, to anyone who works uh, on the tree planting program, both to men and women, and we're really strong about that. Um, and to pay for anything else that we might need to, any materials that we might need for the nurseries and all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it completely depends, though. Sometimes it's a lot more expensive, up to a euro. Hello? Yeah, go on. Um, but otherwise, um, sorry, I had a bit of a strange noise there. I thought I'd lost you, but we're back up. <laughs> um, yeah, up to a euro sometimes, but sometimes a lot cheaper. It completely depends. Yeah, I was looking at some photos of your projects on your website last night. It's true to say, is it, that most of the trees you plant are very small? Like, I'm just thinking, does it take a long time for them to grow big, you know? Yes, we tend to plant new trees, so that's usually little saplings. Um, and it, depending on the location, it will take years for them to, to grow. We do actually, we only really count a tree um, as sort of having been successfully planted and grown after, if it's still there after three years, if it oh. survives the sort of initial three-year period. Mm. Uh, but it depends, for example, in Indonesia, because the climate is so tropical, kind of the, the seedlings that we plant there will grow very fast. So even in, the, in a matter of months, they they grow by even some meters, which is amazing. And in other dry climates like Burkina Faso, for example, it's a lot slower. Um, and it also depends on the tree. 
Um, so each project is different and has a variety of different species, and each one sort of have their own planting methods and and variety of um, mm. uh, growth, I guess. You mentioned there are two countries that you plant trees in. Is it solely in developing countries you plant trees in? Pardon? Is, is, is it solely in developing countries that you plant trees in? Developing countries? So we actually focus, yeah, so we actually focus on um, biodiversity hotspots. So these are areas in the world where you have the highest concentration of um, biodiversity, mm. but that's ultimately quite threatened. Um, so a very popular example is maybe Madagascar. Um, and these areas tend to be um, sort of in the Horn of Africa, South America, um, Indonesia, as well as a biodiversity hotspot. So it tends to be an overlap between um, sort of developing countries and projects and the sort of areas that we look in from an environmental perspective. Um, and the reason why we choose to work in these biodiversity hotspots because actually planting a tree here has a much higher environmental impact mm. than it would do, for example, planting one elsewhere. But on the other hand, we also really like to focus on projects that empower the, the people in some way that are involved in the project, the local communities. So often the um, Local communities, rural communities, for example, in Madagascar, um, suffer a lot from deforestation, um, be that from fires, be that from logging, um, corporations logging illegally, legally. Um, and so what we try and do is, is provide them with an alternative source of income, um, which comes through basically planting a rich, biodiverse, mixed forest from which they can actually also have a living. Um, and yeah, it will actually also empower them to um, yeah to improve their lives in in many ways other than just um, helping the the natural environment. Mm. If you have planted over thirty million trees in the last three or four years, you must have a lot of people actually doing the planting, do you? Yeah, so we've got quite a lot of projects. When I actually first joined Ecosia two years ago, we had only um, three projects or four projects. Um, but now we have, I think, over 18 projects um, around the world. So we work with um, partners on the ground, um, that's NGOs, um, local groups. Um, we have a basically due diligence process that our tree planting um, team will go through um, and to see if oh, it's compatible or it's a good project and something that we want to want to do and it makes sense. And then we just go forward and, and kick the kick start the project. And so at the moment, yeah, we're planting in I think eighteen direct projects across at least um, at least fourteen countries, but maybe even more to be honest. Mm. <laughs> I lose <least. laughs> Just to talk a bit about Ireland um, for our listeners, um, planting trees is something I've been interested in for a long time, even though I've never been involved in an environmental organisation and I don't have my own back garden, so I've never even planted a tree. But um, Ireland and England is similar with the UK. Well, Ireland is known as a green country to a lot of people in a sense. We have a lot of green fields covering most of the country, you know. But only something like two percent mm. only something like two percent of Ireland is actually covered in forests or trees. Um and a lot of the fields in Ireland in rural areas have no animals grazing on them and there's and and, and there's no food grown on most of them. So I, I think it'd be brilliant if in a country like Ireland which thousands of years ago used to be covered with forests, I think it'd be great if we could really increase the number of forests and trees over the country. It'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, like, uh, would you have any interest in planting trees in Ireland or the UK? So we don't actually, we're not looking to plant trees in Ireland or the UK at the moment, even though we know there's a um, sort of a need and, of course, so much, um, so much of the country was actually rich forest, which is no longer standing. You're absolutely right. Mm. Um, but having said that, we do focus on areas that, like I said, are biodiverse hotspots, which are sort of these usually rainforest areas that are um, sort of really threatened at the moment and that kind of most urgently need um, reforestation. Mm. And on the other hand, we also focus on countries where it's not necessarily possible um, or easy um, for the government themselves to, to initiate these programs, mm -hmm. um, be that because of political or economic situations. I think, but for example, in Ireland and the UK, um, 
a sort of tree planting, a uh, national tree planting initiative is something that the government is totally um, capable of, of doing itself. Um, so this isn't somewhere that we sort of feel there's an urgent need for us to, to um, sort of go and try, and try and improve the situation. Just have another couple of questions, Nikki. I'll keep you all day. Um, and I know if you plant a tree, it helps the soil become more fertile, isn't it? Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is true. And particularly in um, particularly in areas um, that are um, agricultural areas where there's a lot of um, monoculture, the soil can become incredibly depleted. Um, and actually, if you introduce trees. Um, and create what's called agroforestry systems, um, you can really replenish the soil and even increase productivity um, uh, of agricultural production. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we've gone through everything. Uh, we, you've given me a lot of information there, Nikki. Thanks very much. Um, uh, is there anything else you want to say on your actual work? Uh, like, I know you have um, a shop now on, on your website where people can buy stuff. Is there anything else you want to tell us before, about, and about the shop as well? I think, you know, just give Acosia a go. Um, head to www.acosia.org. Um, you can add it to your desktop computer um, as an extension. It's available for Chrome, Safari, Firefox, all the major browsers. But also we have an app um, which is available uh, on iOS and also on the Google Play Store if you have an Android phone. Um, so you can sort of go in there and download it as well. And, yeah, of course, we've just opened a shop, which is very exciting. Um, and actually 20 trees uh, are planted from the sale of each um, each of the t-shirts there because again all the profits go towards our tree planting so yeah you can head to there and get a t-shirt to support um, what we're doing as well it's a great idea for a present isn't it to buy a t-shirt uh, I have uh, someone in the family's birthday's coming up and I'm going to buy them a t-shirt from the website you know it's a great idea for a present isn't it yeah I think it's brilliant and you know it also just helps to show that you know people are interested in the kind of work we do and to start up a conversation because like you said many people haven't heard of the Cozy and mm. don't really know what we're doing we're still quite small considering um, um, considering how many trees we've planted actually so the potential is really really big to do a lot of good um, so the more people that hear about it the better so yeah I'd encourage everyone to get a t-shirt mm. uh, last question uh, could you tell us if you have any other big developments planned for the next few years or is it a case of trying to just spread knowledge of your work and plant millions of more trees and that's exactly it we're just trying to get the word out trying to get more people to, to use Ecosia and plant a million more trees we've got a big goal of planting a billion trees by 2020 mm. um, so that's something that we're really working hard towards and we you know we're constantly working on improving um, search engine as our mobile app browser as well so all of those things are all to come in the next few years hopefully <laughs> okay Nikki thanks very much